minutes after the top of the 8 o'clock hour in the central time zone on this 16th day of February 2016. Oh. Greetings. Good evening. How you doing? Hey. We're getting audio bombed. Yay. <laughs> hey, Got family. Child in the studio here. Family first. I've always said that. You know about, you know that about me by now. Welcome into GCW Radio from Global Championship Wrestling, live at a multiple location station. Studio One, Fast Steady Lane over here, live from Mad Dog's House of Paint. The man himself, Mad Dog Dan Sawyer. What's up, brother? Uh, doing well. Got Miss Elizabeth with us tonight for a few moments before bedtime. Good night. Bye bye. Night night. You gonna say night night? You gonna freeze up? Night night. I love you. <laughs> That's all I get. That's all I get. There you go. <laughs> Thank you to everybody for tuning in through BeyondRingside.com as well as through the Beyond Ringside mobile app. Tune in mobile app up and running. You stream flying strong as always. Uh, of course, uh, it's right around the corner. We bit we kind of been on hiatus for a couple of weeks. We you know we time things out to where we'll start doing the GCW radio thing uh, t- about a couple of weeks before showtime, and this. February, always a beautiful month for us in global, right, Dan? Oh, yeah, it's Black History Month, but uh, the man that made wrestling all come true for Mad Dog and uh, many of the students that I I have trained in the business, uh, the Junkyard Dog Tag Team Memorial Tournament 2016 version, uh, been going on 16 years. We started doing this in 2000, and, uh, you know, it's just been a strong tournament. Uh, it used to just be for the trophy, and then four or five years back, we decided, hey, it's the GCW Tag Team titles on the line, but uh, now, World Tag Team titles, you know, so GCW titles, you know, identified with the World Tag Team, you know, it's, who's the best tag team going in the Southeast right now? I guess that's the, the big thing, and I know Wicked's not with us right now. Of course, he might pop in at any moment. You never know who's going to drop in. But uh, we're one of the few companies that actually try to do something with tag team wrestling. I know there's, you know, Beach State did a great job with their tournaments. And uh, but the thing is about the JYD, it's going to continue over two shows, more like the uh, Crockett Memorial Cup back in the right. day. I know we really just went deep. When I said that one, uh, most of our listeners don't even probably you know what that is. But oh, you know, and I, I should do this probably off the air. But our, our good buddy Larry Davis ran into him today at lunch out in Trustful, and uh, he said to tell you hello. Cool. And uh, his health is doing better. Good. And so uh, you know, uh, he's he's making movies, man. So uh, he's doing independent movies, and he said he couldn't be there on the twenty seventh, but he'd be with us in spirit because he's. In the process of, uh, he was cast in some kind of independent movie recently. So uh, it's always good to see the the fans out and about uh, when when you're out. <laughs> when it's not just at a show, I, I love seeing them at a show. But it's nice seeing good people that were once workers in the business, and uh, you know they they still like to say hello to you. Don't a lot of that go around much anymore, really. <laughs> yeah, it's actually quite funny. Hey, Matter of fact, you know, what, he never asked, "Hey, you're going to book me." You know, that's, uh, <laughs> reminded, reminded of the scene from Beyond the Map where the guy's jumping up and down with the dumbbells on the trampoline. You never know when that next match is going to be. That sounds like something um, a longtime mutual friend of ours would be saying right about now, too, if he was on board with us. And that's <laughs> and trust me, that's no guff. Um, mm. <laughs> been a while since you've heard that name, too. Uh <laughs> But I'm going to sit back. You know, it's it's funny because we talk about people that we run into on occasion. And, you know, down at WWE um, a couple of weeks ago, down at the Birmingham Jefferson Convention Complex, Legacy Arena, of course, always great to run into. He who was there when I first started in this whole thing. Uh, nickname Foots, Paul Garner. A lot of people, longtime fans are going to remember um, him from Continental and Southeastern as well as World Championship Wrestling, where he was working over there to um, help build stars, which... There's been so many different ways that that term has been used, and I refuse to use the J word, even though technically it is mm-hmm. a bad, it's a badge of honor, and I've worn it before, and I wear it with pride. Extra talent, yeah, extra talent, extra talent enhancement talent, however you want to phrase it. Um, of course, we've had so many different friends and so many mutual friends in this industry over the years. It's like when you do get a chance to run into somebody, it's always a nice kick in the pants, and that puts a smile on your face because you always helped. It always helps to remember the good times, right? Oh, yeah, and that's why I put that thing out there last night about, 
you know, uh, about trying to achieve your dreams and stuff. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do something, you know, first and foremost. You want to learn to be in this business, learn the right way, be trained, but you got to be respectful because the same people you see going up the ladder, you're going to see coming back down. Wise words from Sherry Martell. I'm sure someone shared that with her. But, um, you know, you've got to take care of each other. you got to be respectful for the business. I had lunch today, a business lunch, and I was just sharing with folks about it's got to go back to being a little more business-like in the sense of being respectful when getting to a show and respectful to all the boys and just just respect the business a little bit more. I think I still get so tired of seeing guys showing up in flip-flops and, you know, shorts and wearing a holy T-shirt and stuff, you know. you got to look like somebody. I mean, the thing is, I don't say you got to do like Ric Flair and have a $3,000 suit, um, but... You got to you got to dress accordingly. If you're a champion, you got to represent. So. Exactly. And speaking of, hey, we got a new UCW Heavyweight Champion. We're talking about Bosnia Wartel Spiral. The congratulations coming off that fatal four way, and what a match that was. And can't wait to see it on uh, YouTube soon. But uh, you know, some of the stuff's already out there. So make sure you check for those links. Uh, coming up in the next few days. but So we're being joined by a lady wrestler. I, I don't know if uh, sometimes that, that might be stretching it with that with her her selfish stick, but coming up uh, <laughs> February 27th, we've got a GCW ladies title match coming up with the champion Pandora being challenged by Veronica Fairchild. And uh, wow. Wow. During Stormy Lee have been running rampant over the last few weeks, wouldn't you say? Just wide open. You, know, you never know what's going to happen, what they're going to do. Uh, you know, you got Frankie jumping in, you got Brotherhood. It's just, uh, it's kind of wild and crazy what you're going to see come out of, you know, the ladies' division in GCW. And I, I've got to say, you know, it's, it's really taken off. You know, through, uh, Priscilla Kelly. Uh, that was that was a good match for the first time ever in GCW. And, mm-hmm. uh, she she did not win, but uh, you know, Pandora was the special guest ref. There was uh, a grievance between uh, Pandora and uh, Veronica, but you know Veronica got her hand raised at the end. But then that's when the action started, and her and Stormy Lee tried to do a number on uh, Pandora's head, the ladies' GCW champion. And then from the back, you got a little, little equalizer, I guess you can say. you got uh, <laughs> America, America Strong coming in uh, coming in hot, I guess you can say, because uh, I never saw two ladies run out that looked like the chicken house was on fire. That- I think those, uh, those two birds hit the road quickly. To say the least... And this, I mean, look, I'm going to go ahead and say this because we have people listening from all around the southeastern United States and, of course, all across the country. And for those who have had a chance to follow America Strong, of course, you've seen her on Ring of Honor television. You've seen her on a number of different promotions all around the southeastern U.S. And this is a person that I have referred to as the mercenary, not a, but the physical strength. Great knowledge of her whereabouts. She continues to improve in the inside the ring in the world of pro wrestling, but she has that mercenary, mercenary mentality where I'm going to sit back and say this. She has the potential to be one of the most dangerous competitors because remember the people that she's seeing all around the Southeast, including places like wrestle America, peach state global championship wrestling ring of honor, all these different places that she goes to work she has a chance to survey different talent. And then also you've been um, with her working side by side right now in GCW with Pandora, the, the black rainbow as she has been called or calm like a bomb, which is her standard nom de guerre. <laughs> and you know, this is a person who takes no crap off anyone at any time. Pandora will fight. If it's one-on-one, two-on-one, it doesn't matter. And America has been picking up that trait but also by the same token, when you get a chance to see one of the hot newcomers in the world of pro wrestling like Stormy Lee and a pure veteran in every sense of the word like Veronica Fairchild, 
like them, love them, hate them doesn't matter. You've got to respect them. And I say this, I mean, I say the same thing behind the scenes as I say in front of the cameras and on the microphone. When it comes to the tag team combination or the combination of makeup and muscles, Fairchild and Lee, these two are quite dangerous in and of their own right because they have no regard for anybody but themselves. Therefore, they don't care what they do to anybody at any particular point in time. Right, Dan? (laughs) Yeah, you know, you've heard the old saying, you you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. But you don't have to use a hammer in the kitchen to make an omelet, you know, but... Those, those ladies are destructive. Uh, you know, you put them together and, you know, they're, they're, they're just a handful, as my granddad used to say, quite the handful. And uh, they, they, uh, they are wide open, you know, and they're two ladies that you wouldn't want on your bad side. Of course, she hates me now because you know, I, I referred to her as a tramp one night about her and her selfie stick and uh, you know, she was out there, Leon the Bull Stressor came out, and they were going to do a number on me, and here comes the bull, and pulls out the taser. And, uh, wow, I, I can't wait to see what kind of stuff Havoc C. Cross has to say about that. But, <laughs> you know, he comes out there, and uh, I, I heard that uh, O'Malley actually... I had to uh, sit on one of those cushions to uh, go to his day job because uh, something about the prongs or something maybe uh, a little bit of, I don't know, I wouldn't want to say hemorrhoids because I'm not a proctologist. But uh, all I'm saying is I heard the click and the snap and then I saw how O'Malley move like a commercial for the Jesse Owens movie. He was He was gone. He was gone. <laughs> And he might could have, you know, he could have might have dumped a basketball if the goal, you know, if he would, if we'd have been under the goal, I think I, he may have touched the top of the Pell City Civic Center that night. That is conceivable. Matter of fact, we made the reference to her just a couple of minutes ago. Like to welcome in very special guest at this time, and I'll run the full nom de guerre, so to speak, the vicious, the ever so voluptuous and vivacious, and always primed to be victorious. Veronica Fairchild, how you doing tonight? Oh, I am absolutely fabulous. The time I'm not going to ask how you guys are because I really don't care. Sorry. Well, thanks. Uh, we we appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, join us. But uh, you know, we're talking about your big match coming up. Uh, taking on GCW Ladies Champions, come with a bomb, Pandora. Are, are you ready for this? I mean, yeah, it's it's funny you mention this because as we speak, I am currently going through previous matches of my awesomeness and just admiring all of my work. And I mean, she should be watching what I'm watching to see how she is going to stand up for herself. She's got no chance. It's so sad. Um, because when we when we Stormy do, Lee, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I was a little behind on the feed there. I was asking you, is, is Stormy Lee coming to the ring with you? Because I mean, every time Pandora's back's turned, uh, you guys try to <laughs> jump her from behind. You know, we do nothing. I mean, I don't know where you get your information from, but um. I'm not sure. I was hoping that means she might be there and she could possibly be at ringside with me. But I definitely think I will have my legal official with me for sure because I don't want anyone doing anything that shouldn't be done to stop me from winning this title. This is my title shot. Do you know how long I've waited for a title shot? Yes. For the women's GPW title shot? Yes. I mean, how, how long? How long ago? Let's see, since 2008. Wow. Eight 2008. Years. It's finally my shot. I'm not going to have anyone interrupting anything. So if I have my legal counsel there, nothing 
can go wrong. All right, so I was trying to discuss uh, with Larry Goodman one night. He's the one that does the Georgia Wrestling History Show, and uh, they have a name for it, and I forgot it, so please forgive me, Larry, if you're listening. But I was trying to say that you're like the most decorated, active ladies wrestler going today that you had won like nine different ladies championships and uh, I, I knew you had the Memphis and you had the Tennessee wrestling one and there was one in Mississippi and Florida and all that kind of stuff but yeah this is your There's first time there been a couple in Georgia too don't forget that uh, well I said there were six and I, I couldn't and name them all South Carolina but continue you are saying well, no, but I, I, you know, I'm just saying you're very decorated, and you know, I'm, 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 I'm trying to speak positively. I know you don't like me too much after what I said about the selfie stick and the, the bald brotherhood. And uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, hey, but someone said something about you thought about shaving your head. Is that true? Yeah. Oh, maybe that was a rumor. Eddie, was that you that said that? Not even close. No, okay. I would like to find out who has started this ugly rumor because that is so untrue, and I'm going to squash whoever started this rumor. Because oh, I know who I mean, it was. It was Pandora. Pandora said she was going to shave your head. That way you guys could uh, look oh. like each other. Would you wait till I see her? Just because I'm with a bunch of beautiful bald men does not mean I have to look like them. People are so stupid. I mean, literally, you cannot fix stupid. You can't. Not even with duct tape and super glue? Say that one more time. Uh, not even with duct tape and super glue? No. You can fix <laughs> ugly. You can't fix stupid. <laughs> um, I, you know, you, you make up the muscles is not having to do a beauty pageant. You know, I know you're not going for Miss Congeniality by any means. Mm-hmm. You know, this is a, a ladies' wrestling match. And I even saw where Pandora said something about wanting to make it a no-DQ match. That way, if those, uh, I forget what colorful metaphor she actually used about the brotherhood. I don't think we can use but, those right now. <laughs> <laughs> she is from New York. That is true. You know, he you, you guys. a lot of words. You guys, Sometimes uh, they do not make sense. Though. I'm going to, I'm going to wrap their heads. She <laughs> said something like that. <laughs> Very good impression. <laughs> Hello. Uh, you know what? <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes. Have we been invaded? Yes, we have. Who, who am I talking to right now? Well, Finally. Well, oh my god. Do me a favor. Allow me to. I don't think- Allow me to do the yes. honors if I could, please. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the invasion is complete in more ways than one. Miss Fairchild made a reference to her legal representation, and this is the reason why I am so glad that I am not the acting commissioner in global championship wrestling at this point in time. Although anything can happen, this man has been a thorn in the side of the front office for many, many years. He is one of the most accomplished managers you will ever find, and he is the legal counsel for the Brotherhood and Makeup and Muscles. He is the legal legal. Howard C. Cross. Welcome into GCW Radio. Veronica. Veronica. Yes. Yes. I appreciate that you have a sense of humor, but I don't know if I can forgive you for this. See, I get a text saying, Howard, call this number. A cute little smiley face winking. And what is on the other line? None other than Eddie Lame. And if I'm not mistaken... My sensitive nose detected the foul stench of that filthy dog, Mad Dog Dan <sighs> Sawyer. Am I correct? Yes, yeah. you were on GCW <laughs> Radio, and we, oh, we are discussing right. February 27th, Mr. Legal Eagle. Oh, I'll, I'll get See, back I, to you. I had to have you, I had to have my legal representation on the phone, so I no. would not say anything that I'm not supposed to say. Now, Veronica, I I, I do appreciate a good joke as much as the next guy. But (laughs) I've got to tell you, I was going to get you a brand new personalized selfie stick 
but when you won the GCW women's title. But because of this little joke, I may have to put it off for a little while. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Not that you don't deserve it. We'll talk about that later. Okay, but you know what? Actually, I'm glad you pulled me into this little conversation with Eddie Lane. I can't believe Mm -hmm. I had had a chance to talk to him in so long. It's been so nice. But I want to give these two numbskulls a piece of my mind because, as we all know, I have plenty to spare. I've got (laughs) brains and spades. Let's see. Let's kind of do a recap. What happened? Oh, yeah. I have been railroaded, Eddie. What? Yeah, I know. (laughs) What? Continue. Uh, no, we don't go ahead, Joe. You, you, were, you, were, you were saying something about your were I was saying something that's so much more important than you imbeciles could even string together. It's, it's incomprehensible. Okay, here, here's the State of the Union. Howard C. Cross takes GCW by storm, recapturing the GCW tag team title that so rightly belonged to my clients. That's and, right. Yes, the Brotherhood. O'Hagan and O'Malley, who they are the best champions that GCW has seen in a decade. Do you hear Easily. me? Easily the most dominant tag team champion team I've seen. And here's the funny thing. They shouldn't have to defend these belts at the tag title tournament. You know why? Because they're already the champions. They already possess the belt. This is just a mere formality. Okay? And, you know what? I should even just press charges against you, Mad Dog. And who, who was that clown, that cop guy that came walking out at the end of the last Leon year? the Bull Stretcher? Oh! Mm. Ho, 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 ho. Leon, yeah. No, no, no. It's more like Leon the Baloney Stretcher. The stretch me <laughs> out guy. You know what? He attacked me. You don't do that. You do not touch Howard C. Cross. No one does that to me. You know what? On February 27th, the Brotherhood is going to make you guys pay for that little insult. <laughs> you like that? Huh? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I would be glad that the brackets hadn't been broke down, but I would love to get my hands on your it team. It doesn't matter about the brackets. I'll define the brackets, Sawyer. When I choose the right time, we will take you apart. Do you hear me? I'm not a Mr. Potato Ed. <laughs> so, you wish you I'm the one that's I'm the one that's known for taking noses, pal. No, <laughs> oh, this is rich. This is rich. Oh wait, you don't understand being rich, do you? I do. Somehow it's <laughs> cross. Veronica, no. I, I hope these two numb skulls haven't uh, wasted too much of your precious, precious time tonight. Not too much. But I'm glad you are backing me up so I don't say anything that I shouldn't. But they have just informed me that Pandora says that she wants a no disqualification match. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say yes to that. I I have to get permission from you. No, if, if you're not chicken, you can go ahead and say it. I mean, uh, you know, he's going to make sure that it's no DQ, so... The way you guys run business and the makeup of muscles and the brotherhood, I mean, it looks like y'all could do whatever you want to. But I'm sure if you sign an ODQ with Pandora, she's got some tricks up her sleeve, too. Well, all I've got to say is we need to review these air quotes. I'm air quoting. You can't see it right now. (laughs) These contracts and stipulations for matches before she signs anything. You hear me? Anything. I agree. See, that's why I needed you here. That's why I'm your legal representation, my dear. Exactly. I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not stupid. I mean, I'm getting in the ring to take my title. My well, title. Well, yeah, do me that's fa- exactly what we're talking about. These titles belong to us. It's just I mean, I don't even know why I should have to... Be holding it why, right now. I mean, I should just be handed the belt. There's no reason that it should be around her waist, period. All right. It, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you guys go on for a little bit. And, you know, me and Eddie have sat back and listened. 
here we are, a perfect example of someone feeling entitled, that something is owed to them. That's not the way professional wrestling works, guys. Nope. You know, and I know that uh, Eddie, he's, he's been in longer than me and by six years, so he knows this business better than I do, and he was once the commissioner of Global Championship Wrestling. And, you know, we don't just give out belts here. You've you got to earn them. If you, if you want to be given a belt or you want offline, but they won't say GCW, ladies champion, and they're not going to say world tag team champions, for, you know, your brotherhood boys. You know, I don't know if you guys have been narrowing your hair too much and it's eat through your brains, <laughs> but, you know, I'm telling you, it, the tournament is on February 27th. You guys are not going to have an easy night. And, Veronica, you're surely not going to have an easy night going against Pandora. I'm, I'm going to promise you that. You know, I've, I've been in mixed tags against this chick before, and I've been hit by guys in nightclubs that didn't hit as hard as her. So, you know. I think she, that's a threat. Can... I'm, I'm going to. No, gonna say, that is he, not a threat. Promised. That is not a threat. He I'm just telling promised. you. He, he, I'm he just telling you better cover up. You know, you got a pretty face. So if you want to keep it that way, cover up. I'm just saying, cover it up. Get your hands up. I'm just, that, that, that's, that sounds like a preparing statement, does it not, Eddie? It sounds like that the nice little piece of advice should be translated to Remember to defend and protect yourself at all times. I will say this. Calm Like a Bomb Pandora has the same regard for you that you have for her. I'm so prettier. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well, that goes without saying. But you know what, Sawyer? Get a little statement about being entitled. We're not entitled to these. We have earned them. Match after match, victory after victory, we have crushed. You're the one that dropped them. We're the one that picked them up. So I don't want to hear you talking about this anymore, okay? We are defending the titles that are rightly ours. No one gave them to us, okay? So I don't want to hear any more inane, insane, dumb brain stuff coming out of your mouth. All right? End of story. I just have one question, Mr. Cross. Where exactly? No, I won't loan you 25 bucks, Eddie. You can quit asking. You okay. never pay me back. That's okay. Remember, you still want me off the Alabama-Auburn game this year. <clears throat> I'm waiting on those wings. <clears throat> Where exactly did you find those tag team titles? You know, that's an interesting story, but that's um, client attorney privileged information that I'm not at liberty to share with you right now. Hmm. He told you. <laughs> well, actually, I didn't tell him, but that's, it's, yeah, it's wordplay. <laughs> Something you know all too well. To which I will sit back and say, for those who are newcomers to the product of Global Championship Wrestling, I will sit back and say this. Howard C. Cross is no spring chicken. This is not the fir- this is not the first few times that he's cracked open eggs. He's probably popped a baker's dozen or two. We are referring to and Mr. Cross, and I say this with all due respect. This is a man who is a very brilliant legal mind. This is a man who has been not only a nightmare in the boardroom, but a nightmare at ringside for those who stand across the ring from his charges. He has managed GCW heavyweight champions, GCW tag team champions. He has run the full gauntlet and palette as far as the types of competitors that he has represented. I have a world, it is not a begrudging world of respect either. Because as someone who started out in the industry, also as a manager, I respect the ability and the intellect of Howard C. Cross. Doesn't mean I like him worth a damn, but I do respect him seven days a week. And I will say this. Keep a very close eye on Mr. Cross. Because he is one of those who is not afraid to interject himself in situations. By the same token, I have also, in addition to watching his managerial wizardry, I have watched him 
handcuffed at ringside. I have watched him in a steel cage at ringside where he has been held captive to where he can't <laughs> interfere in a match. I have, I have watched him become tar and feathered. Mm. You thought I forgot, and not to mention, I've seen a fire extinguisher explode in your face. Mm. So, what the new chapter for mm. Howard C. Cross has to offer? Folks, this is a shoot. I'm waiting to see what happens. Dan? <clears throat> I'm scared. Well, not because of my match. I just I just know that they're going to do whatever they can to win every title, any title they got, you know. O'Hagan's a middleweight champion. They say they've got these stooge belts, I guess. You know, what's funny. As I, I talked with Bullet Bob Armstrong, the current commissioner for Global Championship Wrestling, and he, he, he says that those belts are in his office in Gulf Breeze, Florida. And Bullet Bob Armstrong. He doesn't know what day of the week it is. The only belts he has hmm. in his office came from Sears or J.C. Penney's. Yeah, yeah, probably nonsense. They look a little different, and you guys know well, that. They, they say world tag team champions. And what does your belt say? No, that's what I thought. It's just a, a gold belt. I mean, it, those, those belts, they look great. I've not put one in my hand. I don't know how heavy they are. They could be uh, chocolate wrapped in gold foil, you know, Maybe. Yeah, you know, sorry. Unless you have some uh, proof of these allegations you're making, I could sue you for slander right now. Absolutely. Actually, you can't due to the fact that he's formulating hypotheses and um, utilizing opinion. You can't sue for no. utilizing opinion. He is slandering the rightful GCW tag team champions. Good names. The good names of the Brotherhood right now. He is marring. He is defaming their character. Completely agree. Well, I'm not going to do a gag order, but you guys came on to the GCW radio product, and, you know, we appreciate you being here. And you guys are great at everything that you do, but you've all got your hands full on that night, February 27th. You know, Pandora being challenged by Veronica, and the Brotherhood against all other tag teams in the company. And there's some stiff competition out there. Sawyer, so, I just hope you guys make it long enough in the tournament to face us because we're going to be in the final round and we're going to walk no away doubt. with the belts. Now, whether it's you or someone else we have to step on to get there, fine. But I really, really, really want to see you cry when we lift up those belts. Ooh, I, too. <laughs> <laughs> I, tell you I what. like that. Let's make him cry. Uh, there's no way you're going to make me cry, either one of you, on anything you say <laughs> or do. But I'll, I'll go out on a limb and say this. I will kiss your feet, Howard C. Cross. <gasps> if your team beats, it don't matter. If, if, if we are beat in this tournament, I will kiss your feet in the middle of the ring in Pell City, Alabama. Barefoot, no sock, or shoe. No, I mean, let's just not get gross and kinky now. There you go. We're, we're, we're going to do that. This is not customs. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this, 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 this Shoes. I will kiss those shoes of Howard C. Cross. Uh, well, let me get my boot-licking, shoe-kissing shoes to wear that night, Sawyer. Get ready to pucker up. I didn't want you to kiss my feet anyway. I had to put Germex on them and you get rid of all those. Oh, uh, yeah, you, uh, yeah, you wouldn't want like that. Ugh. Nasty vermin. Dogs carry diseases. <laughs> well, I, it, uh, it's been fun. And the pleasure's been all of yours. But at last, <laughs> the legal legal has another call to attend to. It's got clients to follow up with. So, Veronica. You got to chase, more chase and ambulances, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Your income poopery never ceases to amaze me. <laughs> Laugh it up, puppy boy. We'll see you February 27th in Hell City. <laughs> and we'll be the ones walking out with the belts at the end of that tournament. 
Au revoir, dum-dums. Adios. Folks, tell you what, I'm going to take that as a cue. We're going to head to a very brief commercial break. We'll be back on GCW Radio right after this. Howdy, friends. This is the Magic City Motor Mouth Fast Eddie Lane with your invitation to join yours truly, along with Mark Mabo Bowman and the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, every Sunday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Pacific, for Beyond Ringside Live. Wrestling, mixed martial arts, sports talk, and a whole lot more. Keep your eyes open on BeyondRingside.com for all of upcoming show information, and of course, catch us on social media as well. Until then, we'll see you this Sunday, 6.30 Eastern, for Beyond Ringside Ringside Live on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. Sunday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern here on BeyondRingside.com. Join us for the Midnight Black Mass. Myself, the Reverend Dan Wilson, brings you the dark gospel of professional wrestling. Uncensored, unedited, uncut, and not for the faint of heart. You can find out more about us at youtube.com slash pottyhumor or subscribe at Potty Humor on iTunes and Stitcher today. The YouTube to Determine Show live Wednesday nights, 9 Central Standard Time. Join myself, the Orc of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, the Grand Design, Clyde Braddock, and the Magic City Moon Rough, Fast Andy Lane, as we take you to the edge of uncensored. Yes, we go uncensored, so make sure you have your earmuffs. Ask your parents, for those of you you know that are a little young, maybe under 18, but make sure if you have any heart conditions or any mental defects, please listen because they may take effect right here live every Wednesday night, 9 Central Standard Time, Beyond Ringside Radio Network, beyondringside.com. When planning your next party or special event, insist on the best. Full Range Entertainment is a professional entertainment company providing a full range of services. From professional disc jockeys and MCs to catering and photography, when the details of your special day must be perfect, call us first. Wedding receptions, corporate parties, school functions, birthday celebrations, and more. We also have Birmingham's largest selection of karaoke tracks available. With over 40 years combined experience, Full Range Entertainment can provide you with the talent and professionalism you need and deserve to make your next event one you'll never forget. For more information on the full range of services we offer, call 533-HITS, that's 533-HITS, or check us out on our website at fullrangeentertainment.com. The Mad Dog's House of Pain, the only nationally licensed pro wrestling school in the state of Alabama. Mad Dog Dan Sawyer, trained by the Junkyard Dog, will be your trainer. You want to be a professional wrestling superstar? Learn from GCW's own Mad Dog's House of Pain. With over 22 years experience, learn from the Mad Dog's House of Pain. 205-567-6482. Start your career today. Call 205-567-6482. As we disappear, more often than not, we do reappear. Welcome back into GCW Radio Live on a Tuesday night, the 16th day of February 2016. I really hope on behalf of all of us with Global Championship Wrestling that everybody did manage to survive Valentine's Day without it becoming the Valentine's Day Massacre all over again. Also, want to put this one out there for everybody. We will be back on GCW Radio one week from tonight, Tuesday night, February the 23rd, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. Pending another blizzard or something like that, which is totally non-existent in the state of Alabama. For all of our friends listening up in the Northeast, <laughs> my heart goes out to you. Quit hogging the snow. Let us have some down here. I may be the only one that no. wants it. I may be the only <laughs> one that wants it, but, you know, I'll take it any way I can get it. Literally speaking. <laughs> Fast Eddie Lane in Studio One from the House of Pain, Mad Dog Dan Sawyer. Uh, I'm I'm here, and uh, I think we're minus an eagle, the legal eagle on this, this route. I think he abruptly left us. Oh, he flew the coop real quick. <laughs> well, I'm glad he just didn't say anything when I said he was ambulance chasing. And something about me being an ambulance you know i opened the door for him and he didn't take it so well, there you didn't go. mean for it to come but you know he's very quick witted and like to welcome back in the number one contender for the gcw women's championship veronica fairchild welcome back you should just go ahead and say soon to be gcw women's champion i'm god i'm always victorious eddie think about it 
almost always you have had a couple of setbacks in in recent days but by the same token when it came to singles action you stepped up to the challenge and you put yourself in position to capture the title i did not lose the tag match i don't know if you were there conscience when all that was going on but i did not have the one two three on me i understand you remember that yes i do quite uh-huh. well i called the match remember <laughs> Vaguely. Vaguely. I know. I'm the most forgettable character there. Trust me. I've come to realize and love that point. However, I'm going to go ahead and throw this one out there. And and I know that we've got a lot going on on the 27th, especially the JYD Memorial Tag Team Tournament. I'm going to go ahead and lay this one out there. As it pertains to respect, as it pertains to watching over your shoulder, coming out of last month when America came down to the ring to balance out the odds. And you and Stormy pulled a strategic retreat. Can I assume that there may be a little bit, keyword little bit, of respect there when it comes to the odds being evened up with Pandora and Merica? No. That's what you get when you assume, Eddie. You know what happens when you assume, right? Oh, trust me. I've dissected that word more often than not. Yes, yeah, no. Respect for America. She's come from nowhere, and she's still nothing. Because you have muscles, I'm supposed to respect you? What has she done? I've been in this business for nine years now, and I'm supposed to respect someone that just comes in out of nowhere, and all of a sudden she's got muscles. I'm supposed to respect that? No. She hasn't proved anything to me. Have you seen a match that she's done? No. Not with you, no. Uh, No. I haven't even seen her do a match, period. I mean, she might have, but is anybody watching it? Right? I don't know. I have no respect for her just because she comes to the ring with a chair or her muscles. If she wants my respect, she's going to have to earn it. And that's going to take a lot, I'm sure, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Now, I want to take a look at some of the teams that are going to be competing on the 27th for the JYD Memorial Tag Team Tournament Trophy. And remember, the tradition is the tag titles will be up for grabs during the tournament as well. Uh, Dan, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to toss your way first. The combination of Xanders and Ace Haven. Hashtag trending now. Your thoughts on them, brother? You know, I got to see them in action over in uh, each state during their tag tournament and and they're just quite the uh, the team, you know. I think the young ladies like them, but uh, they they move very fast. Uh, they hit some good double drop kicks. You can tell that they spent some time together. I, I think Ace um, helped break Charles into the the business a little bit, you know, and helped him polish and train and stuff. And you know, they got the matching gear. It, it's hard to tell them apart, except Ace's hair is a little bit longer and a little bit brighter but uh you know they've got their own manager too to kind of watch their back with amy haven and uh i I think these guys have uh got a full tank of gas and ready to run i think that uh they offer a high-paced uh high-flying style that some of the other teams don't have um you know as far as both guys you know i mean i'm not saying that everybody in the tournament can't go, but as far as the style together, um, trending now is, I think they've got their own little agenda, and they kind of like to uh, do the double team stuff, and they're quite impressive. So if you've never seen them tag, you're going to get to see them February 27th at uh, Bell City City Center. Veronica Fairchild, your thoughts on trending now? Mm, They have nothing on my brother's. Short sweet well, nothing. <laughs> and if they're lucky enough to even have a match with us, um, I'm going to make sure that Amy is not in brother's way of retaining what is theirs. You know, Dan, I, Dan, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I've had a chance to watch Haven and Xanders on more than one occasion. And for the length of time that these two have been tagging, you would not know that they've actively been tagging for less than a year. 
because their chemistry is spot on. These two continue to get even better every match they are involved in. Win, lose, or draw, these two go out there and they work like a genuine, long-standing, long-form tag team. They have studied each other's styles to the point where you would swear that they've got 10 years together as a team when I know that they've got less than, less than a complete year. And so that's a full credit to them and their, their intellect for the world of pro wrestling and tag team wrestling especially. I want to take a look at, tell you what, I'm going to go and throw this one out there because I really want to hear what she has to say on this one. She being, of course, our special guest, Veronica Fairchild. I'm going to bring up the combination known as the circle of disrespect. Simon Says and Francisco Chiazzo. Miss Fairchild? Interesting that you bring that up and ask for my opinion. They're a great tag team. And my sister, my girl, Stormy, is right there with them to make sure that they get what is theirs, too. So if it comes down between me with my brothers and my girl Stormy and the circle of disrespect, I'll say that I'm going to do what it takes to make sure my brothers get what they deserve. And that's Mm. time. I like the way you stirred the family. Family first. Family always comes first, no matter what. Okay. Sorry. Mad- oh, no. Mad Dog Dan, sorry. Come on in. You know, I've I've competed with these guys in the uh, Global Warfare last year. And uh, they they are quite the tag team. Now, I've never wrestled Time and Says before, but I have wrestled... Uh, Mike Cruz and Francisco before, and I've tagged with him. So um, he's going to do, you know, Frankie's going to do what he can, being the king of professional wrestling, as he calls himself now. Uh, he's going to do what he can to win his match. And, you know, to show you how far I go, he wasn't even involved in the heavyweight match for GCW Championship for that fatal four way. But he caught Braddock with a pair of brass knuckles as he came out of the locker room. And the officials made him leave the building, like completely, grab your stuff, you're out of here. And uh, that was that was good. That was good. But uh, you're going to do whatever it takes. And uh, and just like Veronica's got the Brotherhood's back, I, I think Stormy leaves. You know, she's got the back of the circle of disrespect because... That's her man. That's her fiance. And yeah, you guys may be blood or whatever you say. You guys are like rap stars saying you're related to each other. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you guys are really related or not. But uh, Francisco is engaged to Stormy Lee. And yeah, things can really get to kicking. You know, (laughs) this is a whole point that I hadn't even thought of because I I keep thinking about, you know, I've got the brotherhood on my mind and. You know, uh, Jack Gunn and uh, Big K and Main Attraction, you know, Brett Jackson and Donnie Bryant. I mean, there are a lot of young guys in this tournament, but they're hungry. They're, they're wanting to make a name for themselves. And why not make a name for themselves in the biggest promotion in the Southeast and in Global Championship Wrestling? I mean, this is a premier tournament that didn't start running last year, 16 years. 16 years honoring the life of WWE Hall of Famer Sylvester Ritter, the Junkyard Dog. I mean, not just because he was my trainer, but this is an honor for Memorial. You know, we talked about the Memorial Cup of the, the Crockett Cup back in the day in WCW, and you know, it's uh, this, this is some lineage to this. This is not just uh, another tournament thrown together for an angle to draw people. This is something that people look forward to every year. They're they're anxious to see who the tag team champion is going to be. And, you know, this is an interesting year because there's two sets of belts. I mean, 
I guess I can't say that until I see them in front of us. You know, the world tag team belts and then the the belts that the Brotherhood has. I mean, they, they are tag team championship belts. They look authentic. I haven't touched them. I haven't, you know, uh, seen the authenticity of uh, a Reg Parks or... Uh, Do you really think you're going to get that close to the belts? I mean, seriously. Well, I mean, a man can only wish. I mean, when we defeat all the teams of Leon the Bull and myself, uh, I'm sure I'll be the whole Yeah. Mm. I'm glad you I think so highly l- of yourself I- and Bull. It's so, so, so sweet. It's not. Well, well, we got we got some power and we got some experience. Yeah, when you use a taser, I mean... <laughs> That was funny. <laughs> that was funny. And how, how's this hemorrhoids? Are they, are, they, are they okay? I mean, is that what they're actually saying? That his swelling is around his buttocks? I'm going to play the fist. Yeah, I would too. Because do you guys have to put some powder on him? And some little desitin at the end of the what night? We do? But it's special. What we do to take care of each other is no one's business. That's gross. Now I'm getting a visual. I don't even want to see him without his pants on. Yeah, so. no way. Oh, that's uh-uh. disgusting. Thank you, thank you for taking Why us on your weird... minds always go there? It just got weird. No, no, no. You brought him up, so I just Ugh. just telling you. Well, when you're when you're putting the salve on his hiney before that, just remember he's going to need some more after we're done, because. Uh, I'm going to take a bite out of crime, as McGruff used to say. Oh, so you're a guard dog now. So well, since you have your police officer with his taser, you're going to be his little canine? Is he going to come out with your little collar, and is he going to hold you on the leash? Oh, does he let you ride in the back seat of the car with your head hung out? I bet that is a great, great picture. I've got to find somebody to get that picture. <laughs> And I have a message from uh, Hot Ice over in the chat room. He said, Veronica, thanks for the nightmare. <clears throat> However. Gee, thanks. And you can yeah, tell him, um, Wayne, if you're listening. He is. I am not a crybaby. I do not want another sign that says Veronica is a crybaby. He's actually he's listening into the do chat not. room right now. And we're talking about a uh, good friend of the family, extended family, if you will, officially known as the GCW sign guy, Hot Ice Wayne Shell. Killing the rainforest he, one show at a time. He used to be my friend. <laughs> now, if I could, I'd like to offer this up. And once again, we're going five minutes before the top of the hour on this Tuesday night edition of GCW Radio. Um, Back to Basics is on hold at this point in time right now. We'll return next Tuesday night at its regularly scheduled time of 9 p.m. Eastern Central Time. Uh, right after GCW Radio. When it comes to a combination such as the Circle of Disrespect, with the exception of the Brotherhood, the COD is one of the longest-running teams in the tournament this year to this point in time. COD have been tag team champions in numerous states. They are individuals who know each other that well. And I would say there's a strong similarity between the COD and the Brotherhood. But a lot of that has to do with longevity. Mm -hmm. You know your partner. You know their tendencies. You know their bright side, their intellect. You know the dark side and the sinister. Hmm, Sinister. How you doing, man? But when it comes down to it, they know they can trust each other. And they know that they will put each other on the line in order to accomplish the goal, just like the Brotherhood would. So I'm going to leave that one out there. And then you add the combustible element of Stormy Lee in place and possibly even T3. Because you can't leave any element out of an equation. Good God, they got like a party. It's like a Latino birthday party. Yeah, pretty much. Jeez. How many many people... Jeez. How many people can they bring to the ring? I mean, let's let, let's let's get Bullet to do a little investigation work with this athletic commission. How many how many managers do you need? As many as you need. I mean, who? What kind of question is that? 
I mean, nobody comes out with a valet and a manager. and. Oh, I mean, my gosh. I mean, look at boxing. They have their guys. Everybody needs a posse. Just because some people aren't cool enough to have a posse doesn't mean that you and Bull should be jealous about it. No, nah, I'm not jealous of, of Stormy Lee, and I'm definitely not jealous of you. Uh, I, I, you would just get in my way with your little stick. Because you know what dogs do? They chase sticks and they bite them. So I, I sure would hate for your hand to get bit. So if something happens, the Brotherhood gets a chance to go at the police officer and his canine, I should definitely throw my stick in the ring so the dog starts to chase it. Thanks for the heads up. <laughs> yeah, but I would be severely worried about that stick having even more ramifications once the return trip does take place because that's the team that I want to bring up right now. And that is the combination of my tag team partner here on the show, Mad Dog Dan Sawyer, and his tag team partner in the tournament, Leon the Bull Stressor. I will put this one out there and I'll take lead on this one for one simple reason. Watching the natural progression of Leon Stresser and watching the intensity and the dedication of him working through the shoulder surgery and the rehab therein afterwards, watching and knowing Mad Dog Dan Sawyer the way that I do through all the years that he and I have worked together, whether we've been on the same side of the boardroom, opposite sides of the boardroom, and sometimes opposite sides of the ring and the venue too, I know that when the dog sets his mind to something, brick walls, titanium walls, Tanks don't get in his way. Stressor, in and of himself, coming back off the shoulder surgery, getting clearance, getting back in, rehabbing the shoulder, getting his strength back up and his endurance back up. He's on a mission to prove something all over again. Remember, Mad Dog made the comment recently that the last memory of him was not going to be him leaving in an ambulance headed for St. Vincent's. He's going to go out on his terms, and since he's been medically cleared to get back in the ring and compete, this is a mission for two individuals. Stressor, who is continuing to work to build his legacy and his body of work in professional wrestling, and Mad Dog Dan Sawyer, who continues to capitalize on the opportunities to make his legacy that much stronger. Former GCW heavyweight champion, former GCW tag team champion. How many championships have you held in GCW, Dan? A couple. There you go. One or he two. Way to toot his horn, Eddie. Jeez. Wait till I get to the description for the Brotherhood. You'll sit back and you'll actually mm -hmm. hold your thought for a second. So I will sit back and say this. I'm going to say that the most focused and determined team that is going to be in this tournament is going to be Mad Justice, Leon Stresser, and Mad Dog Dan Sawyer. Miss Fairchild, <laughs> your thoughts. Oh, the funniest thing was listening to you and not interrupting because I thought that might be a little rude, but <laughs> I was literally laughing hysterically, and I know you couldn't hear me. But when you said that he's working his way back from shoulder surgery and his working on his body. I mean, have you seen that goon? First of all, he's bald and he's trying to be like my brothers, number one. And Howard Z. Cross. I mean, there's only a few people that can pull that off. Obviously, he's not one of them. Second... Have they ever even tagged together? I mean, of course, Mad Dog knows what he wants, and he goes out and gets to give the dog a bone. He's going to go. But, I mean, <laughs> oh, oh, the bull. If you mess with the bull, you're going to get the horn. Isn't that what he, the guy says all the time? <laughs> really? Is this a rodeo? I mean, the best thing that he could possibly do with the bull and his horns is him and Jack Gunn go off and have their own personal rodeo. I mean, really? It's not worth okay. talking out well, okay. You know, the Bulls charge when they say Toro at a, with a matador. Why don't you wear something red where you're not going to be hard to miss? And we'll oh make my sure God. that if you, you and your little lawyer ambulance chasing friend want to get involved in the match, you know, 
I'm not one to, to hit a lady, but show me one, and then then I'll be worried. Uh, you know, just 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 wear some red. You know, make sure that everyone can see you. That way, they can see you getting caution. Oh, you know, everyone have, will be able to see me. They always do. Duh. Well, I tell you, you know, after Pandora beats you and keeps her GCW Ladies Championship, we might get her to come watch our back, too. I mean, I know that's probably not in the paperwork that we have a valet. That's or very far-fetched. But, uh, but uh, you better keep your focus on that ladies match, ma'am. And don't worry mm-hmm. about this GCW tag team situation. You just keep walking on out there and making pictures. But you're not letting me get a hold of that camera. Because I'll, I'll get some pictures for you that, you know, only certain people will like. Ew. I was going to take pictures of the moon outside. Some I am so lunar, sure. A, a lunar eclipse. That's what I'm talking about. But, you know, I don't know what the Irish party boys do. But, oh, yes, yeah. we do. I've seen them on TMZ before. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Well, you guys disgust me. I don't even know why I'm still on the phone. Do me a favor. Mm. Let, let's go ahead and take this one real quick. And speaking about Kodak moments, let's shift it over to a feature presentation. Donnie Primetime the Third and Britt Jackson, Mad Dog. Oh! <laughs> you know, the, those guys came in and uh, the, the crowd turned on them for a second. I don't know what Britt did. He did some kind of little magic mic move or something. But... Uh, the fans didn't like it. They were calling him Freddie Mercury and all kinds of stuff. Oh. Uh, were you over there getting pictures during intermission from Donnie Primetime? Are you talking time? to me? I was yeah, taking yeah. pictures with him or from him? Um, I literally threw up in my mouth when he started wow. thrusting her. Whatever he well, wanted that to what you call, call it. Dress? Oh, I have never been so disgusted in my life. I mean, I really do not think this guy has a full-length mirror anywhere to see what he should see. Because if he had a full-length mirror, he would probably put on a lot more clothes and find a razor. <laughs> We we can't we can't stay on there about the dancing style of Brad Jackson, but uh, Mr. Mr. Main Attraction. But you know, let's don't forget you, you spoke of him earlier, Cowboy Jack Gun and Big K. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, both of know those teams have already been shut down by the Brotherhood. Well, this is a tournament, ma'am. I I, I know that you guys I- might not have read. It but doesn't matter. We've done it once. We can do it again. Sounding like Burt Reynolds and uh, The Longest Yard. Good movie still <laughs> after all these years. I know we're a little bit pressed for time, technically speaking, because I know, Mad Dog, you've got other you've got obligations you've got to handle in Miss yeah, Fairchild. I know you I do as well. Few, but, uh, I want to go ahead. I always enjoy it. I, I want to go ahead and bring it up, and we're going to cover Gun and Big K a little bit more in depth on next week's show. But I want to go ahead and throw this one out there. One of the, another one of the teams, and you've heard us reference them. You've heard Miss Fairchild reference them on more than one occasion. And that is the combination known as the Brotherhood, and that would be Maniac O'Malley and Mister O'Hagan. Dog, I'll go to you first on this one. Yeah, they, these guys have won this tournament before, and uh, you know O'Malley has not been back in action. You know, he started back in August. You know, he went on a hiatus somewhere. Could have been in jail. Could have been in prison. Could have been working with the Peace Corps. I don't know. Well, we know that uh, he wasn't going to cosmetology school, getting any beauty tips. Because brother came back and was like the whole ugly tree in him. And not just his ugly boots. Since Wick's not here, I thought I'd mention that. But, uh, you know... The best thing I got going for him is fair. So, hey, O'Hagan, quite the tag team partner. I can't say anything bad about, you know, him as a partner. He and I held gold together, and he's always had my back. We we haven't always agreed, but 
in the wise words of Sex Ferguson, he's a good brother. And uh, But this is business. This is the tag team championship on the line. Uh, are we going to be best friends after it's over? Probably not. Uh, will I send him an email and say good match? Probably not. But the best team's going to win, you know, and uh, Matt Justice is going to run wild on February 27th, no matter who we go against. It was the Brotherhood, COD, you know, Donnie and, and Brett, the main attraction, are trending now. You know, those boys, it's real hard to jump up and hit a drop kick when your leg's broke or you can't stand up. And uh, I've been working hard on my submissions. And there's going to be some ground game and ground and pounding. And I feel sorry for whoever decides to step in the ring with us. If it's the Brotherhood, COD, it doesn't matter. We're, we're, we're going to get it on between those bells. And uh, we're going to be holding up their GCW Tag Team Championship after it's all said and done. There are a number of things that I want to say about the Brotherhood at this point, but I'm going to hold my comments for a full handicap of the team till next week. Miss Fairchild, your comments. Mad Dog made some good points, but when he started talking about his self, all I could hear was wah, 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 wah. I agree that my brother O'Malley is not the most handsome man in wrestling. So what? Who needs to be handsome to win the title? My brother Josh. He's a good looking dude. Just a little small. But they have me. It doesn't matter what they look like. Nobody's looking at them. They look at them at the end of the match when they have their belts in the air and their referees raising their hand because they won. Need I say more? I really appreciate the fact that you were able to come on tonight. And please relay to Mr. Cross that I appreciate him coming on as well. Dan, do me a favor. We'll throw it to you real quick. Shameless plugs and final thoughts real quick. I just keep an eye out on the uh, new shows being uploaded on uh, GCWPro.com. Check out the Facebook, uh, Dan Sawyer. And you can uh, also check out the Global Championship Wrestling Facebook page. And uh, don't forget, this will be an international TV taping for Saturday, February 27th, the 2016 Junkyard Dog Tag Team Tournament. Ms. Fairchild, final thoughts and any plugs you'd like to throw out there? Wayne, if you are still listening, do not, do not, and I repeat, do not make a sign that says Veronica the Crybaby. I promise I will whip it up and I will throw it back at you. And I can't wait for everyone to see my match against Pandora because my hand will be raised at the end with a new women's champion. The belt will go around my waist just fine. And my brothers will have a victory as well. I want to remind everybody, you can find us on Facebook. We've got two Facebook fan pages, facebook.com slash gcwpro and facebook.com slash gcwprowrestling. Of course, at gcwprowrestling on Twitter. We are on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Google Plus as well. And of course, be sure to keep your eyes open on the home site, gcwpro.com. Find us on YouTube as well for the international TV show. From that vantage point, I want to remind everybody, Saturday night, February the 27th, 7.30 p.m. bell time. Tickets are only $10 each. And I want to remind everybody, while they are available and quantities are limited, you yeah, can... There's going so many seats there, so <clears throat> make sure you get on the stick if you want to get uh, ringside seats. And that's not a selfie still... stick he's talking about. No, well, that would be Veronica talking about her stick. Mm-hmm. GCW Media at Yahoo.com, right, Dan? Yep, or, you know, the, the number's out there, too, so uh, just make that happen. 205-567-6482. Leave a name and a number. They'll just say, hey, I need four tickets. Boop, and hang out, because guess what? No one can call back the, the imaginary man or woman. Well, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate the time, Eddie, and uh, thank you, Miss Fairchild, uh, for taking time out of your schedule to discuss your match. And uh, good luck this weekend in uh, Tennessee. 
Who needs luck? <laughs> Let me give everybody the broadcast calendar real quick. Live programming will resume here on Beyond Ringside Sports Radio tomorrow, February the 17th at 9 p.m. Central Time with the To Be Determined Show. Once again, that is 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 Central. On the, mm, I forgot, corner to corner this coming Thursday night, which of course is going to be the 18th. That is going to be at 11 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Central Time. The Shooters Gallery returns on the 20th, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central Time. And of course, the double play on Sunday, Beyond Ringside Live, 6 30 p.m. Eastern and the Midnight Black Mass with Reverend Dan Wilson and Andrew Alexander at 11 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Central Time. Gonna call it a hey, gonna call it a broadcast day here at the Radio Ranch in a multiple location station. Remember, GCWPro.com is the home. Keep your eyes open there as well as all of our social media sites for all upcoming show information. The event page is up on Facebook. It is easily findable. Trust me on that one. Four. Tag team partner, Mad Dog Dan Sawyer. We'll see you guys next Tuesday night, 8 o'clock Central Time. Make your plans for February 27th, Pell City, Alabama, Pell City Civic Center. Four special guest, Veronica Fairchild. Find me on Facebook and I'll try to get a selfie to you. <laughs> I am the Magic City Motor Mouth Fast Study Lane saying until next time, join us right here as we go ringside and beyond with Global championship wrestling. Bye for now.